I was walking my dog here one day and uh, kept hearing a hawk screeching and I was looking around for him and because I, I see him here a lot and uh, noticed that he was sitting up here on the wall and I was pretty fascinated with that because I'd never seen him that close. I've always seen him in the trees and the more I got looking at him, the more I could tell he was hurt. I saw him jump down and he went in the bushes and uh, I figured, well, I, I just didn't want to leave him here because he's such a beautiful bird. And so I figured, well, I got to catch him. But I wasn't sure how to do that either. But I had a, I had a blanket in my uh, truck. And so I went back to the truck and got the blanket and come back and he was still in the bushes. And I kind of used my dog to round him up. We cornered him up here in between the tree and the fence and I threw a blanket over him. We caught him and picked him up. Put him in the back of the truck and he hopped up on my toolbox in the back and just stood there. She took the bird to the Kellogg Bird Sanctuary, who then referred it to a private bird rehabilitator who healed the bird and then returned it to Kellogg and into the hands of Joe Johnson, manager of the sanctuary, who was then deciding whether or not to release the bird back out into the wild. The young red tail had a modest injury to its right hand. It was not a compound fracture. It was not a candidate for amputation, like some of the raptors that are here on display at the Kellogg Bird Sanctuary, where the fracture was so bad that parts of the wing actually had to be removed. So we thought it was a, a candidate for possible release. And we will be evaluating that on its ability to hunt and its ability to fly. When we do release it, we will make sure that it has an opportunity to come back and uh, get a handout on occasion of a rat or a mouse while it learns itself how to hunt. Well, it looks like our young red tail got lucky and ended up in good hands. Hopefully it won't have to spend the rest of its life earthbound in a cage. But I asked Joe to explain this idea of a bird having a broken hand. Next time you eat a chicken wing, take a look at it. It will have a hand, a thumb, a forearm, and a humerus. Just like in us, or like any mammal. The hand is basically one half of a bird's wing and actually is the propeller with which a bird flies. The forearm has another 50% of the wing, uh, which allows a red-tailed hawk to soar. So the 20 feathers on the wing, 10 of them are on the hand. And that was just modestly fractured, not compound, and uh, probably will allow this bird to be released. What's the worst case scenario for this young hawk? Probably inability to capture and kill prey, although I don't expect that. All the indications are that he can catch things that are moving and clearly can tear them up and eat them. What I'm doing is getting a size eight band out in case it's a female, a size seven band out in case it's a male. And we'll take a look at the tarsus and make that decision whether it gets a seven or an eight. Joe gave it the green light. Let's make this as stressless as we can. Oh, get out. That's right, you just roll over and fight me. Yeah, she skinned herself up a little bit, but. Most of the birds that are presented for rehabilitation are often found on roadsides. And it's not necessarily being struck by the car, but simply having the wing hit an antenna, a radio antenna or something like that, that would do that modest injury to it, as opposed to a, a major break or death. Boy. So I think you can call us your boy.
set from banging Hitting around? Hitting the cage. She did quite a bit of that. <laughs> and it looked better before I caught her. And I don't know if you can appreciate it, but the inside toe, the talon is twice the length of any of the others. And that's the one that they actually do the killing with. And don't tell your clients, but that's used for piercing the brain of rabbits. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I was thrilled to see our hawk survive and get a second chance in the wild. But Joe was wise and correct in reminding us of the big picture with regards to red tail hawks and really all wildlife. It's difficult for people to understand, and, and it's certainly romantic to rehabilitate an individual animal and try to return it to the wild, and it, it sort of makes you feel good. But people have got to remember that the critical thing is the population of red-tailed hawks in Kalamazoo County. They need a woodlot. They need a grassland with lots of mice and, and rodents in it, and that is the key to having wildlife in Kalamazoo County is the habitat. Any last uh, parting words here? Good luck. Yeah. Read them. Okay. I'm ready. Whoops. <laughs> Of course, typically what happens is they start eating all the little goslings here in the spring, <laughs> which is not good. Now you can edit that right on out.